Hello, I'm Steve Dennis of Motivational Limited, and it's exciting to be here and to share with you through a series of videos that I think are going to add a lot of value to your life. Today, I want to talk to you about a certain subject that I think is relevant to all of us, and that is how to go from sadness to a life of happiness. <laughs> okay? Many people, and actually at the time of this video, we're moving closer and closer to the holiday season. It's been said that a lot of people go through a lot of depression and kind of feel bad over different situations about life that has happened, and they start kind of having more of a depressed type state. What one of the relationship classes that I, I conduct every week, I talk a lot about how strong are you accepting yourself. And I also share with people who've gone through divorce or any type of other type of traumatic situation. How do you bounce back from a setback? How do you get back up and keep going when everything else around you has fallen apart? And one of the things I emphasize is this, is that you have to have this high level, high octane acceptance of yourself, that what has happened has happened, and you're gonna give yourself permission to move on and today, we're talking about how to move on and be happy while you go, okay? <laughs> All right, let me show you right quick. Dr. Robert Holden has said this. He's, a, he's, he's actually considered the happiness psychologist. And he says, he shares three things that will help move you from sadness, depression, uh, uh, resentment, to a life of happiness. Number one, get some physical exercise, okay? In other words, Physical exercise relieves tension in your muscles and gives you that relaxed feeling after it's all over with. I mean you feel naturally high just by getting a little extra exercise. If you are accustomed to taking the elevator, what would happen if you took the stairs? If you are accustomed to uh, going home and just uh, sitting, on, sitting, on, sitting on the couch watching TV or playing Candy Crush, what would happen if you just started walking around and picked up a ketchup bottle and started, you know, lifting it as a, as a weight or something along that line, okay? So number one, again, get physical exercise. Number two, I love number two, laugh for 20 minutes every day. 20 minutes. <laughs> you know what? I love doing that one so much that before I go to sleep every night, I'm in the habit where I'm watching comedy shows, any type of a show that has a lot of laughter in it. And you know, for me, I love it when something just really moves me so much to laughter that I'm falling out of the bed, man. I just, <laughs> I just love laughing. And so laughing for 20 minutes every day, getting around high energy people, uh, find a video or maybe a certain comedian, someone that will have, share something that will have you laughing, okay? So laugh every day for at least 20 minutes. I was sharing with a niece of mine about a couple hours ago. This had her laughing and it also had me laughing as I was sharing with her. Her father is my oldest brother. And I was telling her that uh, the last time I was visiting with him a few weeks ago, um, I, I spent a whole Friday afternoon with him, and uh, he's 70-something years old. And uh, we were talking and laughing about old days, that kind of thing. And, um, and my father, our father, has actually been dead now since 1985. And so, uh, again, my brother and I, we are really working hard and actually kind of, you know, rebuilding our relationship. And I'm, I'm really enjoying just being around him from time to time as well. Well, after we finished talking, again, I'm 47 years old. After we finished talking, it was a, it was a, it was a Friday night. And he actually walked me out of, the, out, out of the house, walked me to my car. As I got in my car, he said to me, he said, well, I want you to be careful while you're, while you're on your way home. I said, oh, his, his nickname is Bubba. I said, okay, Bubba, I sure will. I'll be careful. And I told his, his daughter, my niece, I said, as I was driving off, I said, you know, can I tell you, I don't even remember the last time that I had someone, a senior citizen, tell me, be careful while you drive home. But it actually felt like a father figure to have him to do that to me. And she started cracking up. I said, I called her by name. I said, when I, as I was pulling off, I looked in the rearview mirror and I just kind of watched him in the background as he was still waving goodbye to me. <laughs> you know? She got a laugh out of it, I got a laugh. And here's my whole point. Find things in life, in life that will make you laugh. Do more laughter than you do more complaining. Okay, so number two, laugh for 20 minutes every day. Number three, force yourself to have more positive thoughts. Okay, number three, force yourself to have more positive thoughts. 
It's been predicted that the average person has over 50,000 negative thoughts a day. Wow. What would happen if you would change the I can'ts to more I can's? What would happen if you change all the negative thoughts that you have to more positive thoughts? What would happen if you became an inverse paranoid? <laughs> In other words, instead of looking at the life and saying, well, the world is just designed to do me wrong and it's another day, another dollar, something bad's going to happen. I just know it is. What would happen if you turned that around and thought, you know what? The world and the universe is designed to bring something good in my life. What would happen if you take that, took that negative thought that, oh boy, the way I grew up was so bad and made some laughter out of it? Here's an example. My father was 61 years old when I was born. And he um, developed Alzheimer's by the time I was 15 years old. My father could not read or write. Education was not a high value at our house growing up. Mom only had a fifth grade education. It, it, on top of that, my mom had lost three boys in the fire in 1963. I was born in 65. Dad 61, by the time I'm 10, dad is 71. By the time I'm 15, dad has Alzheimer's, he's in, he's in his mid-70s. By the time dad is 81, he dies. He dies my senior year in high school. So here's my point to you. I can tell that story with a negative connotation, or I can be somewhat excited, as I, as I oftentimes do in some of my talks. I, oftentimes I talk about, as I introduce, I tell, I tell the audience, my dad was 61 years old when, he, when I was born. Everyone kind of responds probably like you are now. Whoa! I say, yeah, I look at my wife and I start beating myself on the chest and go, oh, honey, like Tarzan. Oh, honey, I'm going to chip off the old block. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm taking something that oftentimes we can look at as being negative and I'm turning it into something positive. And now, the thought and the whole aspect of the way I grew up with parents that were somewhat older, I don't see it as being a curse. I see it as being a blessing. I don't see it as being something negative. I see it as being something positive. I might have failed the fourth grade, had to repeat it twice, but here's the thing about it. Here's what I learned from that. Repetition is the mother of all skill. <laughs> so I had to repeat it, right? But at least I got it right. I wasn't like Jethro. I didn't stand the fourth grade for five years, <laughs> okay? So I want to encourage you. You can go from a life of sadness to a life of happiness, from a life of depression to a life of happiness, to a life where you can accept things as they are and recognize that the best is yet to come. This has been Steve Dennis. I've enjoyed sharing with you today on this particular video and I will look forward to sharing with you on the next one. Thank you very much.